Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Hello again and welcome back, I think is an appropriate word, to Celebrating Act 2, where my partner Art Kirsch and I are with our favorite love and relationship coach, Michelle Fabrega. Michelle, great to have you again. Great to be here. Thank you. Michelle, uh, you know, I have a, a question because even though it's well known that John and I are thoroughbreds, uh, sometimes um, I feel like an old dog because I hear about these new things that I have not a clue what it's about. And maybe it's because... Uh, I'm an old dog. Uh, mm. I hear of something now of some, some of the younger folks or some of the younger senior folks about something called ghosting, where they have a relationship with somebody and all of a sudden it goes poof, like it never happened. They never hear from the people again. What is it? Do you know anything about that or what that's all about? Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, I, I didn't know about this term when I was younger either. <laughs> so it seems to be, unfortunately, a, a term, a popular term and phenomenon these days. And essentially, it's like you said, it's like abruptly ending contact with someone that you've been either dating or sometimes it can be with a friendship. But it's um, it's not having any kind of closing like, oh, we're not going to continue type thing. We just you don't return texts, you don't return calls and um so yeah, so basically, you know, before the internet, it was probably less common because we would see, we would meet people in the course of our daily lives, and you know, at the stores or, you know, um, at a at, at our workplace, at place of worship, whatever, and we would see the person again. So we probably not just leave someone hanging and not return their calls. Um, in a way, it's like public embarrassment would kind of kind of be a balancing force to stop people from not. Um, being clear in their communication. But these days with dating over the internet, there's like this, you know, anonymity, right? And it's easier for someone to just disappear without and you know, without saying why. You might have a couple of dates with someone, you text them, maybe you plan to get together, they never respond and you don't even know anything. And um, so that happens and um, people do it and they also are at the effect of it when others do it to them. Sure. I, you know, I'm not sure it's a new phenomenon. I, I, I think it's a new buzzword. Yeah, I guess uh, you're right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. As you were describing it, I thought back to when I was dating in high school. Um, it's a it's a lack of courage. I can look back at it now. It's a lack of courage to, you know, to man up and, and end the relationship mm -hmm. or or put it into words and say, look, this isn't working blah, blah, blah. And it, women do it too. I remember girls dropping me, never answering the phone again. I'm sorry. She's washing her hair. I'm sorry. She's <laughs> feeding the dog. I'm sorry. She's just not available. You know, right. and so w I think we all do it. I think this must be a human and a human, but I consider it lack of courage as an adult. Now I'm not easy, but I can say, sweetheart, this isn't working. We got to change it. I'm this, you're that, whatever it is. It, addressing the issue uh, between the two of you, even if it's a one-sided issue, is not always pleasant. You know, talking about things that aren't pleasant. So, I, it's not new, but w w how do you? I guess the question is, why is it? Why is it more important now than it ever was? Is it because because we have the internet and we can be anonymous? Um. I think that's a big part of it, yeah. And I think you're absolutely right when you said that, like, you know, the, not having the courage, it's uncomfortable, right, to give to bring bad news to someone. Like, I don't want to, you know, get together anymore. And so people try to avoid this, you know, discomfort. They don't want to have a conflict. They don't. Maybe that person is going to get angry. Maybe they're going to lash out. You know, who knows? We don't know. Maybe they'll start crying. You know, I mean, right? So we try to avoid those things. But the, the problem is that it. Um, it's good to, first of all, for yourself, like bringing something uncomfortable up, like you said, does take courage. And that's a key relationship skill. So I, I propose that you might as well practice this skill with anybody you're coming in contact with and actually say, you know, this isn't working or I don't think I want to get together again and I'm sorry, wish you well or whatever. So 
that's a good practice for oneself to do with others. And, um, and then, like you said, if the other person doesn't have the you know, courage to be truthful to you, do you even want to be in a relationship with someone who treats you that way? Yeah. You know, I, you know I something think... uh, uh, that uh, it seems to me that one of the, the uh, uh, for people who are, let's say, in this uh, relationship game, uh, and it could be, uh, look, both John and I have been married over 50 years, but we run across people who maybe we want to start a relationship with. And uh, uh, me being a, a former uh, salesman, a sales manager, would always follow up with people that I wanted to be in touch with or, or sell them a product or something. But it seems to me that after X number of tries, uh, you can, uh, pardon the pun, give up the ghost. Okay. <laughs> they're not they're not into me get over it and move on it's okay yeah. okay because yeah. uh so if they didn't have the uh to paraphrase my my wonderful partner john uh but a little bit more correct if they didn't person up and uh <laughs> say uh you know what you really suck i really every time i go out with you and i get nauseous i just don't want to see you anymore so mm. and that's generally not how how you would break off a relationship you could be busy uh, uh uh always busy well you know what it's really busy now or it's really not working out so you know you've really been great let's move on so if but if you are the recipient of ghosting uh i mean beyond the fact say okay after a while get over it and move on is there much more advice than that yeah well i mean i think that like what you're saying is that if this happens to you regularly, possibly you're not reading the signs that somebody isn't really as interested or possibly you're also not someone who's open to receiving feedback. So if somebody is, you know, doesn't sense that you're available to hear something difficult, then they're probably not going to tell you that. So that's something that you can look inward. If it happens a lot and you're being ghosted, then it's like, I mean, you know, I'm not, let me just back up a little bit. I'm not talking about like you have, you know, some texting on a dating site and then you don't hear back from them. I mean, that's, you know, barely a relationship, right? Barely a connection. So I don't know. Everybody has a different sense of what is like, you know, appropriate for needs some kind of follow up and kind of closure. But um, that is something that you can decide with somebody you're getting to know at some point after you've had a date or two, maybe you can say, you know what, have you ever been ghosted? And, you know, that's kind of all, all, uncomfortable for me and would you be willing to if we decide not to continue to see each other would you be willing to have a conversation about that I, I would definitely you know be willing to do that with you and you know if you get to a certain point in a relationship then that would be something to have a conversation about and you learn something about them and bringing up it's like making a little agreement about you know your request that you have a closing conversation because you're right I mean letting just um forgetting about it and letting it go and moving on that's you know, great uh, advice, except that it's not easy sometimes, right? And sometimes we're really attached to someone and we're kind of hurting and we're wondering and questioning. And, you know, that's kind of like part of the challenge of dating really is that there's so much uncertainty and we don't get to know what's going on fully with the other person. And we have to be comfortable with that uncertainty and discomfort. You know, the uh, it, it seems to be an adult thing to do to I call it man up and end the relationship if that's what you want to do um, as opposed to my example of my recollection of dating as a teenager ghosting or being ghosted um, which was really immature reaction to wanting to get out of a relationship or an immature reaction from somebody else wanting to dump me um, and we're not always adults. <laughs> we may be a lot older, but we're not always adults and we don't always act like adults. There's always that inner teenager, if you will, who finds it easier just to poof, disappear. So Michelle, I, I, I have a question for you. Maybe you can address this. Uh, let's say you are not the ghosty, but the ghost or your potential ghost or. And uh, you just don't want to have anything to do with this creep anymore, uh, whether it be a date or just a relationship of some kind. Uh, you just don't want to have anything to do with them anymore. And 
let's assume that your judgment is absolutely correct. Uh, it's more than just putting too much salt on food that they haven't tasted yet. Uh, it's, it's really serious, like maybe putting salt and pepper on food they haven't yeah. tasted yet. Uh, so you want, rather than ghost being a potential ghost tour, uh, how would you recommend that uh, uh, people, or should they just get the program and just disappear? Uh, but if they don't want to disappear, how would you recommend that you end a relationship? Yeah, yeah. I mean, great question. The first thing that comes to mind is like, you know, if there's a situation where you feel unsafe and this person, you know, is, you know, you feel like they're maybe stalking you in some way, you know, you get to go somebody, right? I mean, like I give, you know, I give everybody permission to do what feels right for them. So I'm not to say that it's never like appropriate per se or the, the right response. However, I generally feel that it's always better to say, you know, thanks so much. I've enjoyed getting to know you. Um, not wanting to continue our connection right, you know, I wouldn't say right now, caught myself. See, even me, I have trouble. <laughs> but, you know, yeah. I, I'm not wanting to continue our connection and I wish you well. So yeah. part of what this does is, like I said, it builds your own capacity for, you know, saying something difficult, builds your own courage. But you also don't accumulate this... Um, uh, all these incompletions, like, you know, there's people that you just like, you know, I like to think of it as like, you know, real romantic litter on the side of the road. You just toss yeah. it out your window and you keep driving. Like, can we not do that, please? <laughs> like, can we, you know, just for our own integrity, right? And um, and you never know, you could, you could run into that person. They could be, you know, your next interview at a job that you're applying for or whatever, or somebody who ends up dating your, you know, cousin. It's just... Yeah, so it's almost like it's in your best interest, if you can, to say something that feels right. And, you know, depending on the length of your relationship, if you've only gone on one day, you don't have to meet to, to say say you don't want to see them again. It can be, you know, it's all relative, right, depending on how long you've been spending time with them. But, um, you know, kind of for your own integrity and for your own, like, ease and completeness, you know, do the right thing. Hmm. Yeah, it's also, I think, important to recognize if you want to ghost somebody else uh, that you're not doing them any favors by just disappearing. Uh, you're not making it easier for them. You're, you're making it harder for them. You're leaving them with a question, what happened? Why right. me? Uh, why you? Who? You know, this just, it's just not a kind way to proceed. Mm. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. And I think kindness is key. Like, we need more kindness in the world. I, I think it's 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 a good practice to learn to be kind in in situations. And and like I said, it also doesn't you know when you're at the effect of someone ghosting you, it's hard not to take it personally, right? I mean, that's sure. obviously what we need to learn to do. It's like, okay, you know what, the person's not responding. Obviously, I don't recommend continuing to like, what happened? Can we just talk about? It? I really want to know. You know, like at some point, all right, unknown, I wish it were different. I wish I knew why. I'm not going to take yeah. that person. You almost have to kind of do a little self-coaching around that to kind of support yourself through it. And, um, and and this, you know, if this is really challenging for you, it might be a good, you know, situation to get support from, you know, a coach like me, a therapist. Like if this is real, because dating can be really fun. It's like an adventure, right? It can be joyful. And if it feels like painful, like there's just so much rejection and it's just, then, then it's not fun. And then you're yeah. kind of not coming into it with your best self, open, available. And um, yeah. Yeah. It's a, you know, it's a really important topic, uh, Michelle, because um, ghosting isn't just about dating. I mean, that's, I, that's my mm -hmm. common reference to it, but you can uh, you can have ghosting with relatives or business people or, you know, pretty much any relationship um, where you just don't have the courage to end it or they don't have the courage to end it uh, and be honest about what's going on. Mm -hmm. So I think it's it, it's even though it's a buzzword now, it's an age old human problem that uh, we really do need to address. And I, I just love the fact that you've given us um ways to to deal with it uh, both as a ghosty and a ghost door is that right art 
<laughs> but I want to leave you. I want to leave you with one thought. This is perfect for this subject. It's not you. It's me. <laughs> <laughs> For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.